Jamal, he's one strong dude. I really need to get back to doing more videos and reviews because my numbers are starting to pretty tank. I gotta pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. But anyway, I'm here. New review, Jamal Browner's Volume 4 Powerlifting Program. Overall, I liked it quite a lot. Okay, there's a few things that I do want to go over, but we will get to it, okay? Now, Jamal, for those who are not familiar, although most of you probably are, he is, like I said, one very strong person. He is an elite level powerlifter. He is a remarkable strength in his lifts, okay? Now, a number of you have requested that I do a mix of things. His volume four, some requested volume three, some did his hypertrophy program. I decided on his volume form because that's the most recent. It's the one that probably makes the most sense for everybody because all the other previous volumes he did, as he explains, his volume form is kind of like a buildup from the previous ones. It's the latest and greatest built off of those previous ones to make it the best one. So it makes sense to review that one, right? I, yeah, okay. So that's why I chose that one. Anyway, like I said, overall, I thought it was actually done quite well. Now, there is a few things that I had feedback for, of course. You what? But we're gonna get into that, don't worry. Now, to begin with, when you buy the program, you download a spreadsheet. Uh, you can open up in either Google Docs or Excel. Either one will work. And then you also get a link sheet, or a sheet with a bunch of links on it to videos. Ones that explain not only the program itself, but the whole entire program breakdown, which definitely definitely watch because it's gonna help you. It's gonna answer quite a bit of questions that you might have with the program itself. And then also links to technique videos on your deadlift, your squat, your bench press, and a few other things, which are done very well. And the tips he provides in those technique videos are quite good, okay? So definitely watch all that. He also includes links to the previous versions, volume three and volume two. So you can refer back to those as well. So the value is actually very good for the amount that he includes in the price. Very, very good. So definitely recommend all that. And of course he has his YouTube channel where he does a bunch of other type of technique videos, including deadlift and stuff like that. So you can always refer back to those. Before we get into the program itself, let's go over some of the stuff that's included in this spreadsheet. This is very, very important that you actually follow every single tab because otherwise you're not gonna get the most out of the program. Now, to begin with, there's a welcome tab on here. The main only, only important part is the program bro uh, breakdown, which like I said, definitely make sure you watch. Next, you have a start tab. Now this, this tab is very, very important, okay? Because this will determine how your program will look or how it's gonna actually go. Now, there's a few things I like in here, and then there's a few things that I wanna touch on that I think have, that I'm honestly not a huge fan of. How dare you? But not in the way that you might think, and I'll get to that in just a second, okay? So, the main thing is your profile here. You need to fill this out, be very specific, or the best that you can, okay? So you put in your age, then you put in your numbers for your squat, so whatever you have for uh, your PR, your one rep max for your squat, your bench, and your deadlift, okay? Be as accurate with that as you can because it bases off the rest of the numbers that you're gonna be doing in the program off of those numbers, okay? If you're not entirely sure, again, as it says, do your absolute best guess. You can always do a test right before you start this program so you have an actual accurate number. There's also good ways to calculate a good estimate of this, like uh, Jeff Nippert has explained that as well. There's other numbers or uh, other videos on YouTube that you can reference to to know how to do that, okay? Just put down the best numbers that you can. All right, now after that, you can put down your starting body weight. Uh, and then after that, this is probably the most important part here is your very, or very important part anyway, is your variations, okay? You need to select from a drop down menu, your deadlift variant, your bench press variant, and a squat variant, okay? And this is the area that I'm not the biggest fan of. I'm a fan that you can select things because it does help customize the program a little bit more so it's not fully cookie cutter. Uh, and he explains, and Jamal, this is the reason why he included this, so you have a ton of combinations that you can do with and it's tailored a bit more to the individual, which is great, but what I'm not the biggest fan of, and I've explained in other programs that have this style, is that 
uh, you need to be very careful in exactly what you select. And I think there's a few things here that he gives you the option for that shouldn't necessarily be there. But once you select all those things, again, below that, then you have a little questionnaire. So you go over and do a little rating of one, two, or three in this questionnaire based on your stress management, how well you're sleeping, a few other things, okay? You can leave this alone. It's defaulted to two for everything. Um, and you can end up just jumping right into the program like Jamal explains, but um, I think it's, it's a good idea to do this questionnaire uh, because it can alter a few things in the program, some important things. And then also it's very important to make sure you answer this questionnaire as accurate as possible, okay? Because you don't want to mess anything. You don't want to lie on this. You don't want to half do half-ass way through this, okay? answer the questionnaire to the best of your ability to get the most out of this program, okay? So again, that's very important. Follow all directions, all instructions, exactly as they explain, and you will get the most out of this program, okay? So once you're done with the start tab, then after that, you do have your two programs. There's actually two ver uh, versions of this program. There's one based on RP, one based on percentage of one rep max. Okay, you have a choice of following either one. I'll explain that in just a minute. Before I do that though, there's a few other tabs that I want to touch base on. The next one is the FAQ uh, tab. With this tab, okay, he does cover not a ton of them, basic ones, okay, that you'll need to get started. The, probably one of the most important being what a drop down set is, okay, because if you look in the program, there's there's a drop down set for some of those days and it's blank. It doesn't show or says zero for the number of sets to do, which he explains, and it's true, that it's not that you have to do zero sets, okay? That's not an error or anything. It's actually based off of a few calculations. Make sure, again, you read the instructions and the notes in the day, okay? Because you have to record in there how many of those specific sets you were able to complete at a specific weight in RPE, and as long as you don't go above that RPE, and then it calculates the rest of the drop sets to do. Generally, it's gonna be four, okay? If you're able to do four uh, all at the same weight, and as long as it doesn't go above that RPE, then you're good to go, but if you uh, end up going higher than an RP, meaning it gets tougher, okay, then it uh, backs off, okay, a bit more. So you only do two sets, and then you know at the third set there that you're gonna end up going above that RP, then it knows the back off and the weight, it calculates that for you, and then you complete those remaining two ones. That's what the drop down or break, uh, back down sets are, okay, in, in short term, okay, again, I like that uh, a lot, and I will go over that a little bit more in the program itself in just a minute. But there's a few other FAQ questions they do, like how long you should rest between sets. So, you know, I'll, I'll find the uh, questions that they go over. Um, so definitely, again, read that so you fully understand everything. There's also a graph and tracker sheet so you can keep track of your entire progress and how you're going through, and gives you a little graph, a uh, little diagram, so you can see and visualize that progress, which I actually like quite a lot. Uh, and then there's also an very important tab here. It goes over uh, your warm-ups, your prehab, a uh, few things like that to get ready to go, uh, which I think is a perfectly good uh, warm-up. Nothing really, anything there out of the ordinary. Uh, there's some rehab, prehab stuff. That's perfectly fine. It also explains what myo reps are. Okay, so there are a few exercises, mainly like curls or something like that, where he recommends doing myo reps. Um, you know, if anybody who's watched Renaissance Speedization or Mike Rizzatel's channel, you'll know what Maya reps are. It's referenced a lot in there. Um, but again, he fully explains it here as well if you're not too familiar. And I am a fan of Maya reps. They work. They hurt, but they work. Okay? But uh, besides that, in this tab is another important thing or a very valuable tool, which is an RPE calculator. Okay? Because... Sometimes it can be a little bit tough to know exactly what weight to use at a certain RPE, okay? You can kind of be left guessing. Well, he gives you a calculator to do this, okay? So, and if you put in a specific number, let's say you're having uh, your squat, you're putting it at 225 pounds, okay? So with that, it gives you all the calculations so you know exactly what to do at the, not only the RPE, but the number of reps you're gonna be completing with that. So let's say you're gonna be completing uh, at six reps at an RPE of eight. Well, you know now that that number 
is going to be about 178 or so. Okay, now with these calculations, if it's not on an actual like 175 or on 180 or something like that, okay, round down. All right, it's always better to round down with that because you don't want to go up and then end up missing your number. Okay, so round down, if it feels even lighter than it should be or like it's easier, you can always go up a little bit, but it's always better to find out that you're able to go up rather than going up uh, automatically and then having to back down afterwards. Okay, so round down. Now, that's all the basic stuff that's included. Okay, so you shouldn't be left guessing on what to do. So we can go ahead now into the program. Now, like I said, he includes two versions here, an RPE version or a percentage version. Now, the percentage version, that does all the calculations for you, including in those back down sets. All right, so it's fairly easy. You shouldn't be left guessing in what way to use at all. You don't really have to enter anything, anything additional. The RPE one, on the, ver on the other hand, you do have to in a few things, specifically the weight that you used in each of the sets, a few other things. So it's a little bit more work into it, but again, it gives you that option. Some people prefer using percentage-based ones. They like that a little bit more. Some people prefer RPE. Everybody's different, and it's great that he gives you that option, okay? Now, I'm just gonna follow basically the RPE version, okay? Again, the basic principles of the program, the exercise selection, the layout, stuff like that is identical between the two, okay? The only difference is how you determine the numbers that you're gonna be using, okay? So we'll go over here, day one. Now, the program itself, it's 12 weeks long, okay? Four days a week with a fifth day option. Uh, I will go over that in just a minute, okay? But on uh, weeks one through five, okay, you follow a certain uh, path that you increase the RP as you uh, go along in each week. Week six is a deload, and then you kind of start over again until you get to week 11, which is essentially your peak week, and then week 12 is your test week. Okay, so at that point, you should be ready to go to test to hopefully see uh, new numbers or new PRs. Okay, so the way it's laid out is exactly how it should be in terms of powerlifting. All right, so now... What I'll go over here is kind of day one, maybe a little bit of day two as well, because there's some important factors that in day one could end up affecting day two, which I think is important to mention. Um, so in day one here, all right, it's nothing crazy or anything like that, okay? There's not a ton of exercises that you're doing. It can still probably take you an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, but having said that, the overall layout, I think, is uh, quite good. So in day one, you're starting off with a basic squat. All right, nothing wrong there. All right, you have one main top set, what he's referring to as a top set, followed by then a uh, back down set where you're going to end up going down in, uh, in the weight. So staple in powerlifting. A lot of people, a lot of elite powerlifters and, and below train this way because it works. It's a great way to program. Right, so once you do your squats, then you're gonna be going into a bench press variant. Okay, so now again, this is where you select the exercise in that start tab. And this is where it's actually very, very important in what you select. Because again, on day two, you're going to be bench pressing the first day. So you need to be careful exactly what you select because it can possibly affect a little bit of your recovery and ability to fully attack and have the full uh, ability to do the bench press on the second day in exactly the way that you need to. Okay, so now in that breakdown video that Jamal and his coach explain, he recommends doing close grip bench press for most people. And I think that's a pretty good and perfectly fine choice, okay? And it shouldn't really affect your bench press, main bench press the next day. Uh, but again, this is very important exactly what you select, okay? Because if you select the incline bench press, that's a bit more fatiguing versus a close grip bench press. And again, can inhibit that recovery a little bit more and therefore affect your day two, which you're doing the very next day and you're starting right off with bench press, okay? So again, be very, very careful here. And I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail in terms of this drop down part here. Uh, again, just a little bit. Uh, after you select this, or during that bench press variant, okay, it's gonna be, uh, this is where you have the top set followed by the back down sets, okay? Um, you have one set of six reps. Uh, you can see, again, make sure you read the notes here uh, because it helps you in determining exactly what to do for each of those sets. It's very important that you read the notes. So once you do 
two main sets at six reps. Okay, the reps go up to nine. Okay, again, this is just to get in a little bit of extra pump work perfectly fine. Now below this bench press variant, again, you have a drop down. In this one in particular, it's a lower body movement. Um, you have choices like a hack squat, a leg press, or a, uh, a belt squat, a Bulgarian split squat, things like that. Okay, choose the one that you think you want to focus on the, uh, the best. Okay, again, be a little bit careful specifically in which ones you know that you can recover from the best. And then after that, you choose some sort of curl variant, perfectly fine there. Face pulls right after that. I love face pulls. You can never get enough of face pulls. Uh, and then going back to the barbell curls, that's where the Meyer reps comes in, okay? So uh, highly recommend it here. When you do a lot of isolated movements, Meyer reps can be very, very efficient and very, very effective. So I'm glad that he included them here. And then you have at the very end two um, uh, ab variant or exercises to choose one. Uh, again, with the first one, you can select something. It automatically, uh, it automatically defaults to 30 to 60 seconds on the reps here. But if you select some sort of crunch on here, then, well, it's going to be reps, not seconds okay and it doesn't automatically change so but you just default to what it says right below that and you'll you'll be fine so that is day one i think overall done quite well again just need to be careful exactly what you select on those drop downs and in those variants that you did on uh, the start page. Now I'm gonna go into day two just a little bit, okay, because like I said, this does end up affecting a little bit more in some of the rest of the program, okay? So now in the first one, bench press, uh, again, you're doing one main working set followed by a back down set, okay? So again, perfectly fine here, I like that. Uh, now, the deadlift variant. This is probably a very important one, or it is a very important one, okay? So with the deadlift variant, you can end up selecting the deadlift, okay, as the deadlift variant. Now, there's nothing wrong with the deadlifts. On day four, you're already doing deadlifts, though. So there's not much reason to select the deadlift as your deadlift variant here. You're better off, in my opinion, something, selecting something like the RDL. Uh, and the main reason is because, again, you want to make sure you're recovering throughout the week. Right? And if you're doing deadlifts on day four, you're already fairly fatigued from everything else you did from the previous days, all right? So you don't want to end up repeating specifically the deadlift the exact same way, which it, it kind of is in terms of the sets and the reps and the RPE that you're doing. Okay, so again, select very carefully exactly which variant you're doing. I don't think you should have made the, straight, the deadlift available in that drop-down menu, okay? RDLs or something like that would have been a much better choice overall. You should have narrowed it down a little bit. Okay, but again, that's that's my main opinion with this. And that's one of the other main feedbacks I have with this here is that not only to being to be careful with it, but I think he should have gone into more detail exactly how to select the exercises in that drop down. Not so much giving a specific uh, recommendation which one you should choose or he recommends you choose, but how to determine which one you should be choosing and whether or not it will affect the other days or whether or not it'll affect your stim uh, stimulus to fatigue ratio in any way or your ability to recover and how much fatigue you're gonna be accumulating throughout the week, okay? So again, that's why in part I'm a fan of drop-down menus because yes, there's more customization, it's more tailored to an individual, but there's some drawbacks to it as well. And it's important to understand what those drawbacks are and that there are those drawbacks. And that whoever is designing this program needs to explain that there are those drawbacks and how to determine which exercises to select in that dropdown or narrow it down a little bit more on the better choices in terms of this program. But getting into a little bit more here, after you select your deadlift variant, assuming that you uh, selected one that makes the most sense here, uh, then it's done perfectly fine. Uh, then you have a hamstring movement. Uh, any of the ones here are perfectly fine. I think you'll, you'll be just fine. Uh, flat, um, actually another dumbbell, so another pressing movement. Uh, again, be a bit more careful exactly what you choose here. You're doing the bench press the first, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do a flat dumbbell press, for example, as a choice. Um, you know, incline dumbbell press might make a little bit more choice here. So again, the, another thing that I'm that I'm, you know, remarking on here, narrowing down the choices a little bit more. 
uh, or just straight up just not including some of these in this drop down because doing like a flat dumbbell press right after or almost right after doing uh, in the same day that you're doing a bench press doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. On a separate day, sure, but not necessarily on the same day. Okay, so again, just be careful in what you select. Uh, then you have another uh, pulling movement, perfectly fine, uh, two pulling movements, which is good because you need plenty of pulling in any powerlifting movement, okay? Never neglect any pulling. You're doing a ton of pushing in powerlifting, okay? Pull, you need to pull a ton, okay? Because back here, you're back. Very important, especially your upper back. That's why I like the inclusion of face pulls earlier in day one, okay? Because you can never get enough of your upper back, um, upper back work. You can never get enough of that, all right? So overall, that gives you an idea here of day one and day two, okay? So overall, like I said, I think it's programmed quite well. I like it, okay? It's a good way that a, a powerlifting program should be. As long as you follow the exact instructions, you should be just fine and actually make good progress on this. But again, make sure you're very careful in exactly what you select for the variance and in those drop-down menus, okay? And again, I think Jamal should have included a bit better explanation on that, or his coach explaining that a little bit better, uh, or gone into more detail and exactly determining that. Now, again, those who follow this type of program, it's more tailored, as it says, for intermediates or above. I wouldn't necessarily recommend a beginner doing this program. So if you are an intermediate or above, you should have a pretty good idea of which pro, uh, exercises you want to select from that and which ones you want to concentrate on, and a pretty good idea on uh, selecting ones that are not gonna affect your um, overall fatigue accumulation throughout the week, but a good explanation should have been uh, done either way. So that is overall, guys, my thoughts on this program. He includes a ton of uh, good detail and instructions on it, so you shouldn't be left guessing at all on how to do this program, all right? And the program itself, I think, is done uh, quite well. It's not over the top. The volume isn't over the top. It gets straight to the point, includes the main structure that you should be following. Uh, again, you should be fine. Now, like I mentioned, there is also that optional fifth day, okay? Now, this is more like an accessory or pump work type of day, along with some conditioning. And there is some feedback I have in this day. So he recommends doing first a conditioning movement, whether it be a treadmill, bike, uh, or a walk or a jog, something like that, doing that first, followed by choosing four to five accessory uh, exercises, um, something like a pull-up or a hack squat, um, a few other things that you just wanna get some extra stimulus or accessory work in with. Perfectly fine, okay? Um, if you do wanna get that, okay, just make sure you select ones that you know you can recover from well because just you only have one rest day in between this fifth day and day one of the next week, okay? So just keep that in mind, exactly what you select. But the other thing that I want to mention here is that doing conditioning work before your, uh, your accessory work, okay? Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. There's a lot of back and forth in terms of the literature, the research, and whether or not you should do it before or after. Does it actually affect things? Does it inhibit your recovery or your strength gains in any way? Should you do it on a separate day? It all comes down to the individual. There's, like I said, I think more evidence needs to come out or more research needs to be done on this so we know for sure, okay? But in my opinion, what I think is that uh, overall, I would do the accessory movements first and then the conditioning. Now, having said that, if you do walking as your conditioning movement, that's not going to cause a huge amount of fatigue, and you should be able to do your accessory work afterwards just fine. But again, it's specifically on exactly what you choose for that conditioning work. Overall, I think you should do the accessory work first and then your conditioning. Or if you select like walking as your conditioning movement, you could easily just do the on your rest days, okay? So in between day two and day three, and then in between day three and day four, all right? Um, that's a lot of recommendation that a lot of people end up doing as well because, again, walking is low impact, low fatiguing. You can easily do that on a rest day. Remember, a rest day doesn't necessarily mean just sit down on the couch all day. You can still do some activity that day that'll still aid with recovery. Walking will certainly help with that. But other than that, guys, I liked the program. I think it was done quite uh, well. So I'm gonna give it a score of nine out of 10, okay? Uh, great program. Just follow the instructions exactly the best that you can. 
and then just be careful exactly what you select in those drop down of variant. Uh, exercises. All right. So that is my thought on Jamal's uh, powerlifting volume four. All right. Overall, I liked it and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this review. And I will be back with more very soon because I need to do more of them. All right, guys. I will see you very soon.